HIPAA also has a rule that says that you have to conduct a risk assessment. That risk assessment has very specific steps. The idea of a risk assessment is to give you the lay of the land in terms of gaps that you need to fill. You set up a schedule. It could be every six months, it could be every year, but you go back and you do another assessment and then you keep that report as part of your files. It's not like you send it up to the Office for Civil Rights. They don't want to know all this about you. It's just that if they decide to audit you, then you need that record. And that, by the way, is not optional. It's required with the HIPAA Omnibus Act. Now, there are other ways to manage your risk outside of your risk assessment through HIPAA. One is, if you don't need to use five pieces of equipment for your practice, don't. Limit the technology you use. Don't work on public Wi-Fis to do client-based work. Stop looking at easy ways to use new technology. Just stick with the ones you absolutely need. Use only vendors who give business associate agreements, BAAs. A business associate agreement basically is a piece of paper that says that they will handle the problem if there's a problem. You don't need to know what goes on under the hood. All you need to know is where the brake is so you can hit it when you're driving your car. But how that was all put together, you don't need to know all that as a healthcare professional. Mention in your informed consent that you're sharing protected health information with vendors because you do. If you buy software to do protected text messaging, the company that runs that software is going to be seeing what gets messaged. But they give you a piece of paper saying that they know how to handle that. It's just very much like having your billing office give you a paper saying that they are HIPAA compliant, that they understand HIPAA and they are responsible.